What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Bill Bellamy, and welcome to another episode of Top Billing, the number one podcast for the culture, the movement, and the discussion. I'm telling you today, I would like to dedicate this Top Billing to the ladies. This is a ladies' edition Top Billing. Due to my special guest, he is a walking example of black excellence. We have seen him in incredible movies such as Boys in the Hood, the brothers. The brothers. I mean, come on, to can play that game. The best man, best man. Holiday, yeah. television, big screen, small screen. He's walk of fame. The man is a real staple in the game of Hollywood. We love him. My dear friend, Mr. Morris Chestnut. Can we make some noise in the building? What up, what up? Thank Whoa. you, man. I you love the me. intro, man. Whoa. I love the intro, it's from man. The I appreciate it, Yo, man. You're my man, but yeah. I got to give you your flowers, Mo. Uh, you are really a, a great human being and you, you are man. so talented and you just you. represent black men like you know you chocolate like me you know <laughs> what I'm saying exactly, you exactly, represent right, 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 the chocolate right, right. brothers in the world <laughs> and then ain't a lot of us out here that's right. rocking and you've been consistent 26 7 years in the game knock on wood knock, knock on wood, wood. Knock we wood, got some wood, wood here yeah, 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 yeah. Morris how did you do it man how did you man. just decide you wanted to be an actor I always wanted oh, to ask you that oh you know so that's interesting so honestly so I have a, sh a long version a short version I okay. try to give you the medium version so oh. Um, so when I was in I was in high school mm -hmm. and um, and I was you know I had advanced classes but I wasn't doing the advanced work okay. so I was a C <laughs> student in advanced classes because okay. I wasn't doing homework and then one one year um, in my English class she you know she had us do a scene from a play so I did a scene from a play she was you know she was you know kind of talking about me and everything so I said ah, okay whatever. Two years later, um, or a year and a half later, a, a friend of mine who lived down the street was in that same class. He said, yo, man, he said, Mrs. Meadows was talking to the class about these scenes, and she brought you up. And I was like, she did? And I was just, Yeah, I was like, so I said, okay. So, I, so at that time, I was going to junior college. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then um, and a friend of mine in my English class said, hey, come see me in this play. I, I took this chick uh -huh. to the play. It's like our second date, first or second date. Come took on, her baby, to the play. I'm gonna expose you to the arts. Well, yeah, I just took her for a date, right? Uh -huh. Man, she was looking at this cat up on stage. I was looking at her and looking at him. I was like, I need to try this acting thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so no lie. So the very next, the very next semester, oh my god, uh, I, I tried. I, I got into an acting class, and um, and then that was it. And you you were hooked. I well, I, you know what? I wasn't hooked at that point. I wasn't hooked at that point because, like I said, so. So I, every 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 day after class, I would go to the library, look at this occupations handbook to see what type of occupation I want I wanted to do. So right. when I tried acting, acting was cool, um, but it wasn't until I wasn't sure I wanted to. So at that time, I was I went to Long Beach City College. Give us like the, years, roughly early. Oh, 90s. so that was yeah, that was that was what eighty graduated in eighty six. That was like eighty eight, eighty nine. Yeah, okay. I'm still in Jersey. I'm just trying to. See what we are yeah, in life. Yeah, yeah, what we are right. in life. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that was 88, 89. And then, um, so at that, so Tommy Ford, he was, you know, Tommy Ford, the late great Tommy Ford, he came and he visited the school. And so me and two of, two of my friends in class, uh, we started just, hey, let's just try. So we started, you know, trying to go get an agent and all that stuff. So I got an agent. I still wasn't sure. It was something I was still trying. I was still working at the bank. Um, I was a bank teller. So um, where, where I made the decision okay. to say this is what I wanted to do. So I, I got this agent. He sent me on this this audition, and the audition was for um, a different world. And basically, I'm behind. I'm in the cafeteria. I'm giving food, okay. right? <laughs> and the ladies come by, right? And they they're flirt with me. I'm flirt with them. And my only line in the audition, I smile and say hi. That's it. Oh, That's you got it. a good high though, Mark. You got a good high. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you had the, you got the million dollar hunter. <laughs> so my agent, my agent, oh, he, so shit. he, so That's he's crazy. like, so he calls. So I do the audition, <laughs> and uh, he calls me, and I'm saying, I still this time, I'm still not, I'm still not sure if I want to do it, and so, um, and so he calls me. He said, listen, he says they want to put you on a veil. He says, uh, I said, a veil. He said, yeah, they just want to make sure you're available. They're interested in the roles, you and a couple other people, um, but they want to, wow. they want to see. And he said. He said they want to pay you. Breaking down in particular, said, they want to pay you fifteen hundred dollars a week. I didn't hear anything else he said after. I said fifteen hundred dollars a week. What? So I, exactly, I was like, wait. So I said, wait a minute. So I said, I'm not. This was the math. I said, wait a minute. Okay. So if they want to pay me fifteen hundred dollars a week 
to say hi. hi. What are the leads and everybody else is getting? So I, I said, I'm pursuing that. Push- <laughs> that was, that was, that was, and that hey, was hey, it. you did the math. <laughs> you was like, math. for hi? For exactly. 1500 for hi? I got you. It Watch was, me work my way up. Exactly. It was $1,500 That's such a great for story. high. Yeah, so I was like, man, so they're making that much? Because at the bank, I think at the bank at that time, maybe I was up to 15 an hour at that time. Mm-hmm. I was I was doing pretty well there, but it wasn't no $1,500 no, like that. Man. For the week like that. So, so you was, made the transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so that's that, beautiful, man. Yeah, so after that, so after that, I really like, you know, at first it was just me and a couple of one, a couple of dudes from my acting class. We were just messing around. But after that, I was like, yo, I'm I'm trying to pursue this. Then this is this is what most people don't know about you. You you were you were born and raised in Cerritos. Yes. You know, you're an LA guy. Yeah, right? born in LA, raised in Cerritos. So yeah. I so I grew up, I grew up on the East Coast, Jersey and New York City, right? Uh huh. You were to me one of the first guys that I felt looked like me. Like okay. like oh, represented right, right, right. me. Like, okay, I I can relate to that guy. He's on screen. He's cool. He's coming from a neighborhood very similar to mine. I had no idea when I saw Boys in the Hood that it was going to be huge. It was right. literally a breakout film. It was. And yeah. your role was pivotal. And it was it like, was. we was rooting for you. We, we didn't want Ricky to get out of here. <laughs> you right, remember right, we right. Ricky! <laughs> right, right, that right, was right. that was my introduction, yeah. honestly, to Morris Chestnut. Uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. um, and I, as as a East Coast guy, I didn't know what it was like to live in L.A. Like it was my snapshot. Do does that movie come up as like one of your most you know kind of like iconic or sort of roles that people always go, yo, man, I loved you in that movie. It it, it it does. I mean, to this day, I mean, it's one of the things that it, it still really resonates. I mean, now, you know, people are walking around. Someone just sent me a picture today. Uh, he was in New Orleans and he saw everybody, the young kids with Boys in the Hood t-shirts on. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's wearing the memorabilia. And, and, and see, and at the time, so that, that was the thing. A lot of people around the country, they didn't know what it was like to be in, in L.A. Because I got to tell you, but see, for me, mm-hmm. you being from New York, my thing was um, Warriors. Warriors. Oh, was like, that was, that was, yeah, I was Warriors like that. was like a New York movie, for real. For real. For, for real. real. For real, for real. So we yeah, knew, so I, I knew Warriors. Warriors, <laughs> and I knew Breaking, right? But mainly Warriors, right? Warriors so, was crazy. So L.A., so so Boys in the Hood was really kind of like, because New York, everybody loved New York, and it was all about New York. But L, Boys in the Hood was really kind of like the first real movie yeah, about South Central L.A. It really felt like we were inside of L.A. Right, 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 I, right, I didn't know, right, right. I didn't know what, you know, the difference was between Compton or South Central or or, or Inglewood. I didn't know. I just knew everything was L.A. Right, right, you know what right, I mean? I didn't know, right, right, I didn't know right, cities right. at that time. Uh-huh. And and then the beauty of it, um, how our lives were parallel, I was doing stand-up, right? Uh-huh. I never knew that I would ever meet you. I, I just saw you in movies, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Who knew that maybe, what, four or five years later, I would end up doing a film, The we, Brothers. The Brothers. We did The Brothers. And we did The yeah. Brothers together, we man. Did, <laughs> Look we at God. What are you doing? <laughs> and, no, because it was like, no, for real, that's because so crazy. it was like... For me, for me, and obviously, you know, I loved your comedy and everything, but for me, I mean, Michael Jackson was was huge to me, man. So yes. when I saw you <laughs> interview, I'm telling you, I bring it up to you every time I see you. Yeah, Michael put me in. Michael put me in a, in a stratosphere because Michael was Michael Jackson was not interviewing a lot of letting a lot of people, people interview him. Right. He was so private at the time, and the only reason I got that honestly was because I did. I think I did a great job with Janet Jackson. Okay, because uh-huh, uh-huh, I, uh-huh. I did the uh, Velvet Rope tour with her and. I did all her interviews on MTV, and Mike was like, I only want Bill to interview me. That's and what that's, he said. That's he how I got it. So he requested yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's how it happened. It was just a beautiful thing. But as as he did that, he elevated my, my cachet. Uh-huh. Oh, with, oh, I'm telling oh, you, man. man because, it was crazy. Because I think, I mean, it, it, my whole life, I've you know, watching everybody and seeing everything. I mean, Michael Jackson was just, she's, like you say, he's, he's just Did you ever get a chance to meet him? No, nah, I never met Michael. Oh, I went to, I went to uh, John Singleton directed Remember the Time. Remember the Time. You know, but I just kind of stayed back in the cup. I went down to see, but no, nah, I never met him. But when I saw the interview, like, wow, because it was like a black man <laughs> interviewing the top cat top in, the in, in, in the world. Yeah. In the world. So I was like, dang, Bill Bellamy. I was hey, like, that's hey, cool, you man. Know, you, you ain't know you was going to be my dude, though. Yeah, bro. No, you was like, yo, that's my best friend over there. So, <laughs> so listen, we end up yeah. doing the brothers, right? Yes, and right, this right. is when I got a chance to really bond with you. Because yeah, yeah, one, definitely. 
great athlete, great yeah. guy, uh, very competitive, and a yeah. really, really good actor, you know. Man. And uh, and I just realized, I was just like, yo, man, this dude got the, you're the package, right? I'm man. working with you, I'm learning, I'm, I'm in scenes with you, I'm learning, I'm like, wow, this dude is really about his business. Uh -huh. I think that is one of the things that people sleep on about the game. It, it is, it mm -hmm. is, and I, and I think to me, so people ask me all the time, like, you know, like even like, I mean, all these years you're still around, and then that's the one thing that, that's one of the things that I feel um, really has allowed me, other than God, mm -hmm. but it's another thing that has really allowed me to still be here is because the way I approach every job, um, right. you know, it's not, a lot of times people think, Whatever project they get, whether if they're the lead, they think it's about them, but it's really still about the project. And I'm servicing the project, and we kind of come together. I have a good relationship with every studio that I work with, because a lot of actors, you know, they'll say, "Oh yeah, I'll do the movie. I'll you know pay me whatever I'm paying, and then maybe I'll promote it. Maybe I won't promote it." And that's not a good partnership. Right. So whenever I've worked with any type of studio, when it came down to a TV show film, whatever, video, I, it's a partnership, and I understand that. I love that, that and, and attitude. That, and, that, and that is, that's really... But you're a businessman, though. 110%. 100%. I'm not, 100%. You're I'm not a an artist. I'm, I'm not an artist. I'm, I'm an artist by trade, but I'm really at heart, I'm a, I'm a businessman. You're a businessman, and yeah. you're about your business, yeah. and that's how you have longevity, and I hope the people that are listening and watching on YouTube as well is that, you know, you have to have discipline to, to do anything, you know what I mean? I have seen your longevity... Uh, uh, just keep going like I'm just like Mo's doing this like Mo, you're always doing something and I'm blessed. and you're blessed and this is one of the things that I I love how your roles they're always good examples of black men different kinds of black men yes. right yes. and uh in the best man you know what I'm saying right. you had one of the roles that I was like yo that's my boy Rick that's my boy no I gotta do back home Rick right. and I, I was like yo Mo that how did Mo play that role like that? Would he do that in real life? Like, cause you know, like in the best man, you know, dudes had their egos, and a lot of cats be like, "Yo, I never do no shit like that." Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying that uh -huh. lady, she finished me, she right. trashed me, you know what I mean? But you know, you you had a a, a really tough decision, <laughs> right, 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 and but honorable. Uh -huh, like uh -huh. it was like you were the voice, like when in right. the best man, uh -huh. the only way I could kind of like make it make sense it was like what would you do you was if what right. would you do would was you do? a person right 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 <laughs> but let's go back because it's interesting that you said that because listen when i first started out mm -hmm. um acting right right when i first started out acting um it was during um i can kind of say it was like the gang phase like every time I had an audition. It was like gangster number one, yeah, gangster, gangster number, number two. two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you had to be the thug in every thug. movie, and I wasn't getting it, and I and I wasn't getting any any of the roles. And even when my my <laughs> my uh, my my agent at the time, he says, "Hey, you got this project? Is is Boys in the Hood?" I was like, "Oh, here we go." I'm about said, to be gangster I'm number two. Get, yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. It. I'm not gonna get it. And I went and I and, and I got it. So I've been pretty. I'm pretty, been pretty fortunate and blessed right. that um that with the original best man. Um, Malcolm Lee, the writer director yes. of the film, he wanted to. He's most the the depiction of young progressive black men on film. He wanted to project that absolutely because, because he I wasn't love seeing him. it. I you know what I'm saying? Shout out he to was, Malcolm. Shout out to Malcolm Lee because he wasn't <laughs> seeing that, and so that's yeah. why you know with these characters. Unfortunately, me, I was fortunate to get the job <laughs> um, thanks to his wife Camille. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I, um, I was fortunate to get the job, and you know that's and I've been playing those those types of characters and the characters that people people root for. Yeah, and it, it's it's an interesting thing, man. To um to get that position in the game, and but it looks like you make. Chess moves, not checker moves. You mm, feel me? Like mm, everything mm. that I've seen from the outside looking in, just looking at the landscape of your career, you always look like you take roles that mean something. Is is that is that? It is because, because what what I always try to and I try to listen. And, you know, it, I'm not I haven't been fortunate just to get a ton of things offered to me. You right. know, you you have your ups and you have your downs. I've had my runs and I have my my lean times. Right. But whatever job that I do. I always look at 
how I'm going to try to parlay it into something else. Ah, and it's never nice. it's never really been just about that one job. Are we going to keep parlaying. Just keep we parlaying. call back east, we call it parlay. parlay. We just going to parlay that. Parlay, that's what <laughs> that's, it is. You, this is just one, we're going to get eight out of this. There it is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's what, and that's what, I, try to, and that's what I try to do. <laughs> I'll never forget, like, even, like, there was a, um, there was one time when everything just cold, everything was just cold, everything, wasn't nothing happening. And then, um, and then my agent said, hey, well, they want to see you for this. And most cats wouldn't even audition i was auditioning for stuff that you know people who had done stuff that i've done they would turn down right and um and so i said listen i told my i told my manager I said i said brian i said man i said brian i'm gonna go get this as soon as they make up the offer you need to tell everybody in the mother in the town that i'm doing this and i've always had that mentality so every job that i get sometime to my to my detriment because it's harder for me to just focus on just that one project because i'm always chasing other things but yeah it's 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 Every single job that I do, I'm thinking about how I'm going to parlay. Absolutely. This is a thing that most people don't understand about actors in Hollywood, right? You know, they see the fame. They see us, you know, fancy cars, living nice and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize that after we finish a project, we're unemployed. Well, ex exactly. That no one ever understands exactly. that, yo, they're like, what's next? You're like, I don't know. Yeah, ex exactly. Like, I don't know what the next next is. I mean, <laughs> let's talk about what I'm doing right now. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. They, exactly. So, they never understand how many no's uh, we get as actors. You one, know? All, it, one, and I tell them all the time, for every project you see, I probably got 100 no's with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Like, easy. they don't ever think Morris Chestnut get a no. They don't. They don't. But it happens all the time. And right. people think that you work because they re, they think you work all the time, but they rerun your stuff all the time on um, right. videos and all that. So <laughs> you, you're working. But yeah, it's, it's, it's so I'm always, like I say, it's, it's a tough, tough business to where you're always trying to, you're always chasing something. It's the one business. That's why I kind of, I love doing TV shows because at least, you know, they'll pick you up. Okay, we'll pick you up for 10 episodes. We'll pick you up for 20 episodes. I, I know, you know, somewhat uh, how long I'm going to be working. But with a film, you know, most films take around two, by a month and a half to two months. And then you're done. With and then that. you're done. You're un like you say, you're unemployed. And then the rat race starts again. Again, man. And people don't realize that. So that's why I'm saying every single time I take a job, from the minute that I get an offer, I'm on, hey, Brian, let them know this is what I'm doing. That I'm doing but, this, I'm doing we, that. But we rolling. Exactly. exactly, exactly. And I think, I think that's one of the things that um, people love about you intrinsically. There's something very genuine about your energy. You know what oh, I mean? Thank you. It's oh, like, thank you. good dude, man. It's just like, and I love seeing a person that looks like me that's like, very similar backgrounds make it. Like when I saw you get your a uh, star on Walk of Fame, uh -huh. bro, thank I, you, thank you know, I, I was emotional. <laughs> I was like, man, was, I was like, my man Mo, my man Mo, you know, put his hands in. You know what I mean? When you thank see your you, man, man put his hands in the seat, man. I said, yo, how did that make you feel, you, bro? That is you, awesome. You know what, man? Thank you. It's it's one of those things, honestly, mm -hmm. and and this is it's it's all to my mother because I hadn't even thought about it. I wasn't even thinking about that. I'm so I'm so kind of just caught up in the grind and what I'm trying to do next. And and you know, people say, "Hey, well, where do you think you are in your career? Where do you think you're?" Come? I don't even try to think about that because it's not over, and I just want to keep looking towards keep the next. Over, right. And so, uh, so my mother was. She was like, you know, she said, Lamont. It was my middle name, Lamont. She said, Lamont, you know, you know, you need to get one of those stars in the Hollywood. You need a star. You need a star. I said, ah, oh. I said, man, I'm, I said, I'm not even thinking about that, mama. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just keeping it moving. No, you should really. I said, nah. So she literally, so she, she called my publicist. And she called Pam. Boy, we got to give Mama Chestnut. Yeah, she there called. Ain't nothing like a mother's love. You know what I'm saying? She said, listen, this is what I want to do. And this and that and the other. We got to do this. We got to do that. And she activated, you know, uh, uh, Jocelyn, my publicist, and Pam. And all of a sudden, it, it, you know, it was happening. But it, it, was happening. it needed to happen. Oh, thank you. Because it's very rare in our business that you see people who grind it from the mud Stay consistent. Get buckets on every project. Get mm. buckets uh. every time. I mean, you like you like you like the. Uh, I'm gonna tell you who you are. You like a Kobe. You like Kobe mixed with like Penny Hardaway. Or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the uh, they was getting buckets. They was getting buckets. They was getting buckets. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. But, but in our yeah, game, there's very few wins. You know, um, and by that I mean like 
do you get solidified with an accolade? Say you win an Oscar, that's one of them. Say right. you get a couple Emmys, that's one of them. Right, 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 you right, know, right. Uh, You know, we're not musicians. We don't get Grammys and stuff like that. But in our game, you know, we want to get accepted in the business. And then our people. It's two, it's two awards we want. Uh-huh. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Uh-huh. Right, 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 right. I, I, I don't mind getting, you know, the Oscar game into that big Hollywood picture. But we want the streets to love us. Right, right, right. You know right, what I right, mean? Right, we, right. Got a, we got a double commitment to the game. Yes, you feel I agree, me? I agree. Hey, I agree. I, 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 I would rather if I can't if I had twenty Oscars and nobody loved me on the street, I I give ten back. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's right, a, right, right, as right. a black man, we gotta have the love from the street. You gotta be able to go to the barber shop. Like I can I could tell you, going around with you is a problem. <laughs> For all the listeners, you know, I have been around Morris Chestnut. It's hard to be around a dude <laughs> that's a leading man when he just walk in a regular supermarket, right? Uh, so, oh, right, so, right. but the most humble person in the world. Uh, I'm going to tell you a funny story. So me uh, and Mo, we are in D.C. I will <laughs> never forget this moment. I won't either, moment. though. I won't either. Listen, okay, listen, okay, okay, I won't either. Okay, 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 okay. I'm not getting the more chat snut, oh, aka yes are, Mr. Chocolate. You know, <laughs> women love this cat, right? So, because well, yeah. we've been balled on the same team, yeah, balled yeah, again. Yeah. This is my dude. I. I keep forgetting <laughs> that this is Morris Chestnut. This is how uh, I realize uh, who Morris Chestnut is truly is, right? Uh, so we're on, I think we're in Georgetown. Yeah, yeah, Georgetown. And I see you. I'm walking. <laughs> I thought I was in a movie or something because you was walking on the other side <laughs> and he had the cool. He had I the saw cool you shot. first. No, let's, let's be real. No, I was walking to Georgetown. And everybody was uh, there was a, there was a ruckus across the street. <laughs> the ruckus, Bill was there. Yeah, he he, of course, Bill's always fly. He's always dressed to the nines. Right. He's always fly. With his glasses. I think you had a scarf on. I, I, can't I always wear a scarf. Always, yeah, I think you had a scarf on too. Has glasses on. I'm like everybody's following this cat. I look. I said, Oh, it's Bill. Oh, I said, shit. Bill. Bill, uh, look at me like, like I was a fan. I was like, yo, I, 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 I thought you was a, a fan. I, I thought you was a fan. I was and like, I yo, am a fan. I gave you the, yo, what's up, my man? <laughs> That you is did, crazy. Did that. You did that. You did that. But no, then no. I tried to take it back. I was like, oh, that's Mo. Oh, uh, what up? Mo! So get this. It's a true story. Yeah, so true story. I, I run true. across the street. Uh, I'll give my man love. Right. We don't realize that literally we're causing pandemonium. You know, DC is 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 like all of our audience, right? It is, yeah, it is, yeah, it is. Women <laughs> are screaming in cabs. This is way it wasn't no Ubers. There's yeah, right, no right. Ubers. <laughs> These is real right, cab right. chicks. Right. Ah! Yeah. Oh my God, Morris! And Bill Mar- and Miss Morris and Bill. You, it was a lot more Morris. <laughs> Morris! <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so that yeah. moment, uh, as we can reminisce, it was uh-huh. really a, a tribute to your hard work. But I'm uh, joking you. with you. But uh. well, I'm teasing you. But the, the beauty of it is that. Women love you, bro. Oh, you know, you. dudes like you, but women, and let's give it. Let's. This is a ladies' edition. We can right, keep it right. 100. Uh-huh. You a sex symbol. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm grown enough. I'm solid in my spot to say that my <laughs> one of my best friends is a sex symbol. Uh, I mean, is it tough for you? Do you? What, listen, do, what man, do you do when you're a sex symbol? Man, you can't make no mistakes. <laughs> Again, you know, I think it's you know what, what, what it truly what it truly is is I've been very fortunate and blessed again with mm-hmm. the characters that I play. From when you, when you when you're a uh, like going from when you think about the characters and you you see uh, Ricky and people are, are are rooting for me, so I'm as the emotional tie in that whole movie Absolutely. to where people and you know women they they they're rooting for me. Then when you go to uh, Lance and the Best Man, I mean it was like you say it was such uh, it, it was I had to have so much integrity to overcome when I came. And crying on an altar. I mean, what woman wouldn't want a man to see crying on an altar for his love? So I've just been very blessed to play these characters that that people root for and women and women really care for. And this this is and this is traditionally like you like the black James Bond, bro, on the low. (laughs) You know, I know we got Idris out there, Alba shout out, but we got Mo too now. (laughs) This is this is an American (laughs) made. Because I know y'all UK brothers, you know, shout out to all my UK brothers, but we got some American Mo. Muscle over there, <laughs> <laughs> and we strong in this spot. So, <laughs> hey, hey, Mo, real uh, talk. I, uh, I'm very, very happy with this next project because uh, I just uh, saw it in the trades, and then you actually told me about the best man final chapter. I mean, right, right, who right, right. gets who gets to do a sequel? The 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 first movie success, second. 
through the roof. And right. now we have the Best Man Final Chapters. Tell us right. about it. Yeah, so the Best Man Final Chapters. Is, so the Best Man Final Chapters is going to chapters. be. Yeah, no, I was saying that for you because uh, so a friend of mine called me and said, man, why are y'all doing the final chapter? I said, it was actually the final chapters. He said, man, everybody I talk to think it's the final chapter. They yeah. think it's a movie. Right. So I only, I'm not correcting you. I'm just emphasizing chapters because I want people to know that it's a series and it's going to be uh, the final chapters of the character is going to be on eight episodes on Peacock. Wow. Yeah, so what happened was after the first, after the second movie, uh, The Best Man Holiday, Malcolm Lee, he wrote the, he wrote the screenplay for the third. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's budget stuff, and the issues, we couldn't come down, we, we couldn't agree to a lot of stuff. So he kind of put it on the back burner for a while, and then Peacock stepped up and said, well, I think it was a bidding war between them and someone else, and said, hey, you know, streaming services were booming, so he they wanted to give him a platform, and he was like, I think this would be a great opportunity to have eight episodes instead of one movie to wrap up all the Absolutely, characters. Absolutely, because now you got lines. time to tell the storylines. Exactly, to wrap up all the storylines. And because, uh, honestly, like, those characters are, you know very iconic kind of you know characters funny. they're they're like we've got a chance to grow with them in a way without a doubt without and i've doubt. seen all three you know i've seen everything except for the chapters uh-huh. and i'm i love all of them because all of them my friends like everybody the yeah. girls the guys the groups the overlapping or friendships and the secrets like you know malcolm lee I have to give you your flowers you you definitely know how to tell stories he's an outstanding storyteller and he, he he really has purpose in his filmmaking he, does. he wants us to be a certain way he wants to have the to texture and he wants the culture to come alive on screen and you guys do Perfect it way to phenomenally put it. man Thank what you. what 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 now here's the thing that i want to give the, the ladies because yes you know they love you man um, <laughs> uh you Every trail I see you naked. I, I don't. I, I mean, I'm uncomfortable. I don't, I'm saying, each, are you naked? And all the chapters? Is it just a few chapters? Like, what? What's all the nakedness about, Mo? You ain't got no rose. You ain't got no. Back, back in the day, it used to be the white beater joint. No, you just straight naked. What's Trust up? Trust me, that's that's not. That was not me. That was not me at all. It goes back to so even like the so the so. The best man holiday, yeah. right? So I'm in New York. At that time, I was doing, I think I was doing Nurse Jackie in New York. It was cold. I'm from LA. Okay. It was cold. I'm not lying. The the gym at, 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 in New York that I would go to, my apartment's here. It's like right where that smoke shop is. Right. All I have to do is walk out my door and there is the gym. I didn't go because it was cold. Oh. I was eating. And Malcolm called, I was eating a lot. And Malcolm called me. Um, he said, listen, uh, Universal, we're about to do the best man holiday. He says, are you in shape? Oh. And I was like, oh, man. Today? I mean, I can get what? Yeah, exactly. He's like, yeah, he said, he said, he said listen, listen. He says, uh, so I, 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 want, I want to see that V. You got to get that V, Mars. You got the V? I was like, Malcolm, I'm like, man, I'm older now. And so I was like, look, okay. And so I had to get in shape. And then it just turned into a thing. So that's, what, so that's why I was... Shirtless in the best man holiday, and then in and and then and then the in the final the chapters, the pressure, you know, the pressure, <laughs> the pressure. And so then in the final chapters, uh, you know, I, you know, of course, I read the script, and then that's that that's that's what it you, was. And I think we are, all serve our purpose in that. You, this is what people don't know because they you know, you don't get a chance to like really be in the life of Morris Chess. Mm-hmm. He goes to bed early. Uh, yeah, he yeah. does not drink. He <laughs> drinks water. I think he sleeps in the oxygen chamber. I'm not sure, but I know there's a lot of fresh air coming in your room. Um, uh, yeah, it's you, I think a lot of it attributes to your healthy lifestyle. It does, you know. Um, so I've always been, uh, I've always, even my, my, my cousin, uh, when I was, we came up together the same age, I've always gone to bed early, like very early. Like even when you tell I was like, man, can you we do this? You never be in a club, Mo. You nah, never, nah, Mo, you, you and Magic, the only two friends I have. Magic yeah. in bed at 8 o'clock. Yeah, got, like, yeah, I'm, like I'm yeah, a child, too. he get cookies and milk. You know, Magic's <laughs> like, like, I gotta go. It's 6.45, man. I'm, I'm trying, it's time to be in the bed. I'm telling you, like right now, like if I'm at home, nobody calls me like 6.37. If I know if I'm getting a call like right now at home, I know it's, I know it's important. So if you go to bed, let's say you go to bed 8.30. Okay. What time you get up? Oh, I get up like at three o'clock in the morning. For what? Because so I, mine is just reverse, right? So like oh literally, like literally, I had this today. I had a call. I had a call on the East Coast, and uh, it was seven thirty his time. But so what I do is so like you probably go. What time you go to bed? I go to bed about ten thirty. About ten thirty. So when do you do your work? Like when you return emails, you read your script. When do you do all that? Write your jokes. When do you do all I, that? I do most of. I'll be honest with you. 
I get up about six. Oh, so you get up early? Yeah, he said, yeah. I get up about right. six and it's quiet. And then I'll try to get everything done, go to the gym, do that, do my little chores and stuff or whatever. And then then I'll come back. I'm done for the day. But okay. three o'clock in the morning is a smoking time. But see, but see, to me, that's what I, I love that time because I know a lot of people like one of my friends, um, she, she, her and her husband, their producing team, mm -hmm. um, she doesn't go to sleep until you know 3 34 so i'll we're texting like at three o'clock in the morning when i'm waking up and she's going to bed because that's her quiet time right you know but she just stays up later for her quiet time i just get up early for mine so it's just that it's, that's yeah the well, thing. well the, the thing that i think it works for you is you go to bed earlier and you have a longer day i have a longer day and i'm done with a lot of stuff before people even get up it, like before they even start moving but it, exactly no exactly because like i'll be in the gym i'll be in my, oh, I'll be in my training stuff. tomorrow at five in the morning Morning. I'm not getting up at three though. <laughs> I, but I, I do get up at six, and That's I've good. got to the gym. I've been at the gym by six forty-five, and okay. then I'm I'm done. I do an hour workout or whatever, and then I'm back at the crib by seven thirty, maybe by eight o'clock. Okay, yeah. So then now you start your you start your day. Yeah, yeah. No, and I, I just think it's great, man. I think just getting up and 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 just having just silence and. You know, no one's really up at Ain't that time. Ain't nobody moving. Ain't no, yeah, anybody, yeah, so it's just it's just a great time for me, and I just do you know, a little meditation, a lot of different little yeah. things. Yeah. Another thing that I would like to uh, talk to you about that mm -hmm. is interesting because people never talk about how you balance your success with your family. Mm -hmm. And uh, you. my wife and I, you know, we've known you and Pam since, uh -huh. I mean, we kind of got together. You know, you right, were right, like right. one of the first couples that we knew. And we, we were one of the first couples that we knew who had kids before we did have, before we had kids. And uh -huh. one of the, i never forget this, man. We in the driveway, <laughs> and you said, Bill, take your time with the kids. Because <laughs> it's going to be it's gonna be a lot. It's beautiful. I love my kids, but just wait a minute. Right, right. Wait a minute. So right. I remember those wise words. Um, and you were able to do it. You were able to uh, raise your kids. And you know, honestly, so it was, and the reason why I tell people, because it, it, it's an adjustment, you know, from, so one of the, one of the most difficult adjustments for me uh, when we had kids was at first when it's just, it was just Pam and I'm getting a lot of the attention. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I, I married Pam is because I knew that she'd be a great mother. She had a nephew who was young and I saw how maternal she was. Yes. And so all of her attention and energy, 90% of that went into the kids and I oh loved it. God, the I best. loved it, you know, but it was an adjustment for me. Mm. Um, but, and so we just fit into our roles just, just, just extremely well in the sense to where, you know, she was raising the kids and I was doing whatever I can to support them and provide for the household. And so it just, it just, it just worked. Yeah. It was, it was really to watch it, um, to get like a snapshot of how to do it. Um, I look at guys, you know, like you, uh, DL, mm -hmm. and Sam, oh, yeah. we, uh -huh. you know, guys that work and, you know, you, sometimes you just rolling, 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 then it slows down. But whatever, you know, you find the balance mm -hmm. to um, have something for you. That's the thing for me with my family. I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to make a bunch of money. I'm going to be successful. But I always wanted to make time mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. time can't you can't go back you can't go back because i back. i look at your kids now and it look like a blur <laughs> i swear to god i swear to god i feel <laughs> no, like i got crazy. three pictures one picture they <laughs> they 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 four and four and seven uh -huh. then it was you know you know grant you know grant about to be 14 <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right you know right, grant right. grown right it looked like i missed I felt like I seen high school for one session, and then Grant was gone. He's big boy. It's it's crazy, crazy bro. how fast it happens. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's just insane. It it really is. It now, really do is. do they do they still do they st do they like uh, do they still see you like as daddy, or do they they kind of say you know my dad is sex symbol? No, you know? I don't think that. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think they say that at all. As at fact, all I, I you just they, regular dad. I, I think so. I think they 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 only say it. They shy away from it but i just you know i we they've grown up you know they've grown up in the house and um yeah i don't think that they say that at all i don't think they even talk about it to be honest with you really yeah I don't think you they see, you seem like you very similar to me like when you home you the the, the hollywood world is kind of shut off yeah you know what honestly it, it 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 is actually because one of the things that uh it was a conscious decision and for me it, it was I never really, I never wanted to make 
my life Hollywood. Correct. Because, you know, as a, you know, as a businessman, but just even as uh, just being real and understanding life and how the industry works. Right. It's very tough to make an industry because we don't, we think we can't control whether we get hired or not. We can't control our level of success. This all in our hands. We can do the right things. You know, I know tremendous actors who just really haven't had a chance and they've done this and that. They haven't had a chance to really, you make know, that huge jump. make that huge jump. So I'll, I've always said, listen, I'm going to have to separate um, my career and my family. I can't not make my life Hollywood. It's just too volatile. It yeah. fluctuates too much. I need some stability. So, and I need some consistency. So I need to have my career is here and Hollywood is here. But when I go home, it's about the family. It's about other things that I'm I trying like to do. That. And that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what people don't realize too, when you say businessman, you are truly that. You 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 invest very very well in real estate. You yeah. have other things that you do outside of being an actor, yeah. which I think is outstanding, and you don't really talk about it that much. Right, right, yeah. Cause what you know, made what made you want to you know just have you know to buy you know a bunch of real estate and just start a like business ventures? What made you do that? Yeah, so you know it was it was always just wanting to have. Again, so I never got into the industry because to say, hey, everybody look at me. Right. I literally, the decision, man, $1,500 for one word, <laughs> that was really, that, that, was, that, that was the decision. <laughs> that was the decision. It wasn't like I want I'm people to, to see me. I'm about to come up out this bank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't I wanted people to see me as being the man. So I've always been, I have always been um, searching for different types of businesses and whenever I would make money in Hollywood I would invest it in real estate and honestly look I've had a lot of business ventures that uh that didn't work out you know I've had a lot of real estate I've taken huge chances on real estate lost some real estate all that type of stuff but you know just being a businessman I was able to climb back yeah, and just keep it just keep man, it going. I like you, you know? I, I like your your grind bro and I like your your perspective on it you know what I'm saying it's like you you remind me of like a, a coach uh -huh. You know, the players get all crazy. Uh, all but right. the coach, you see the whole field. Yes, you feel without me? a doubt. Without and, a and, doubt. And that's what you doubt. remind me of. Like, your perspective and your vision is wide. And you look at the plays and you say, okay, in order for that's we're not going to go that way. We're going to run it different. We're going to call it audible, and we're going to go over here and shift. Right. And that's, that's the beauty of longevity is being able to, in my opinion, being able to adapt, you know, AKA how to be a player, but also how to be a player. You know what I'm saying? You got to adapt to the situation. But you always got to be able to pivot. You know what I'm saying? Like, Without a doubt. Like think about our business as actors. You know, we we experienced COVID. It was a situation that shut down the entire industry. Right. That never happened before. Right. Right. Not my, not my whole career. Right. And uh, at right. that time, if you didn't really have anything going on and you never had, you know, your money stacked, you might have been in a situation. Like, Without you a know, doubt. that was a that was some stuff that Cash was like, yo, I saw so many houses in L.A. for sale. Right. Yeah. Cash right, was right. getting up out of here. Right. 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 And you got to remember, too. So a lot of things that people don't really even understand or probably don't remember now. But there was a time not too uh, it's not too uh, far or distant in the past past to where there were not a lot of black lead roles on television Absolutely. you know after you had uh, you know you had your martin and your, and your fresh prince but they're really in between that time until you know i don't know maybe 12 years ago maybe yeah. not not that not 20 not 20 nah. where there weren't that many, that many black roles on television so now for, we're fortunate to be having a moment uh, in time right now in the industry to where we have a, a, a great opportunity. But you're right. You always, I was always, man, I, I, I'm, I've had so many, so many different business ventures and things that I've, I've always been pursuing uh, because you, you're right. You have to pivot, you know, things, yes. times will change. Times yeah, will change. This is, this is, this is a very, very great interview with you. I feel like people need to not only understand and get to know you, but they also should admire your hard work, right? Oh, it's like you. you keep your head down. You ain't been in no trouble. You yeah. go to work. You go to hell home. You go to right. bed at 8 o'clock. <laughs> I mean, who does that? You know what I'm saying? Right, right, what, right, what, right. what is a, give me, give me, um, give me a day. Give me a day in the life of Morris Chestnut for All the right. fans that love you. Like, right. Morris Chestnut gets up in the morning. What does yeah. he do? 
Okay, so I'll, I'll get up in the morning. So when I, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll get up in the morning. I brush my teeth. I have uh, so upstairs. I have my office upstairs. So upstairs in my office, I have my water. I have like a small little coffee maker. Right. So I get upstairs. I put. I, I drink my water. Have my coffee. I do a little meditation, return some emails, and then, you know, I'll go to the gym, turn on the news. You know, sometimes it gets hard to do that, but I like to see what's going on in the world, not just locally. So I'll turn on, you know, some 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 um, some news, see what's going on, see what happened in sports the next day, just to relax and chill, read scripts, or do something like that. And then, you know, probably, so with the, when I'm working out with my trainer, I'm in the gym at five. Now, I have a question for you. Sure. With the workout. Yeah, yeah. Because I worked out with Tank. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do uh, sex symbols have their own workout that's crazier than regular? Because I worked out, and I worked out with Tank, and he almost killed me. Right. Is your workout intense? Well, so I have, Tank and I, have, we have shared the same trainer at one point in time. And this, and this trainer, so your this joint trainer, is no, you, you, it's, it's, you serious. It's different. Well, I mean, I don't know what Tank's workout is, but it, it gets tough. It gets tough. But see, it to gets me, tough. Oh, no, it gets tough. It gets tough. And then, like today, so the, today I worked out, and then I played basketball over at Equinox, and then, um, and then I came home. I had a came home, had a uh, had a conference call, um, a two conference calls, and then I had, uh, I, then I had to had to read a script, and then one thing I came here, and you came here. So Morris, you do have you you are Superman and Clark Kent, <laughs> <laughs> kind of sorta, right? When you when you work and you're Superman in your regular life, you Clark Kent, Very you much get so to get Clark to move Clark. around, you ain't causing no static. I I, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah. Ah, question, uh -huh. you know, the ladies, the ladies, you okay, know, they, okay, they, they they really, you know, the smooth voice, <laughs> you know, the eyebrows and the bald head. You know, you know, you make ball, you and Mike, you and Michael Jordan make the bald head fly. Like, it don't even matter. Like, the bald head look like if you grew hair right now, they'd be mad at you. Because you've been rocking the bald head so fly. Uh, like, it hilarious. don't make no sense to, 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 to grow no hair. That's hilarious. Now. Okay, uh, I got a question for you, talking. right? Because uh -huh. I thought about this. Because you know, okay. you've been, you've been, you've you been, you've been the man for a long time. You've been lying a long time. How many years have you been married? Oh, uh, so it would be twenty. It was twenty six years this year. Twenty six years. How? Give give the people out there. They they breaking up left and right out here. Right, right. People just falling apart. <laughs> what 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 is a simple simple, just one good one. That you can give advice for people trying to make your relationship work. Yeah, see, that's a that's a. So I think that um, I think one of the things with myself and Pam, we have a realistic expectation, and we, first of all, it takes work, as you know, absolutely to, to, for for marriage. But we have a realistic expectation and understanding what marriage is. You know, I hear so many single people or people who are dating. Man, I just wish I want to get married because I'm tired of being this. I'm tired of doing that. But when you get married, that's when the work starts because you have Facts. to. You, you know what I'm saying? You have to have even more discipline. But for Pam and I, we have always respected each other. You know, we don't call each other out on names. It's just a, such a level of respect that we have for each other that that really plays into into the part. Like, you know, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I'm just not looking. Even when I'm at home, you know, with Pam. You know, I always try to keep myself up, and she she does the same. You know, I'm not wearing wearing like holy draws, smelling, yeah, not taking no, a shower. No, you take care of yourself. Take care of myself, and she <laughs> takes care of herself. Right. And that, and you, and you, and you need that. Um, and so I would just say mainly just respect and communication. Those are huge. Yeah, yeah. And I I, lo I love uh, you guys' relationship. I love how yeah. you, you know, adore her. And, 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 and you guys seem like the best of friends. Like, it's, yeah, like, yeah. really cool. Like, it's almost like y'all was in ninth grade or something, 10th grade together. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> right. I, I, like, I, I, I've only known you and Pam. Like, y'all just, like, the cutest. Like, y'all should have a doll or something. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, um, I got a, a question for you. Sure. I, uh, I, I thought of this. I thought of this. And this is the part of our show we call All Facts. All Facts. So okay. I ask uh -oh. you a uh -oh. question. Okay. And you 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 gotta you gotta tell the truth. You okay. Can't, you cool. can't get all around. Facts. I, okay. All, all facts. All facts. All facts. Okay. 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 Uh, if they were to do a biopic on your life. Okay. 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 All right. Uh huh. What actor would be able to play Morris Chestnut? They wow. got all the qualities that you have. And <laughs> it's going to be tough. It's no. going to be tough. I'm just I saying, mean, but you, you got to pick somebody. I got to pick somebody. Who going to be Mo? Who going to be Mo? Wow, wow. I mean, listen, I have a I, listen, I I I there are a lot of uh 
there are a lot of young actors out there I really respect. Yeah, there's some I, good I, people I, out there, yeah, but, they ain't, but they ain't mo. That, <laughs> you you got to be a bad motherfucker that, to be mo now. I mean, I can only that, think of maybe. Uh, that, only person I could possibly think of is one. I can only think of one. I, listen, man, the one thing, this is what I do love. Like, I love, I love being on a set. Um, like right now, um, I've been shadowing and doing some stuff on All American, mm. and I love uh, Daniel. He's a he's a great actor, very respectful young man, but a great actor. I just love seeing that young energy that reminds me kind of like I was I'm when I was come, back in coming that. off that bank. Fifteen hundred. We gonna call yes your new nickname fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Y'all gonna give me fifteen hundred for one no one word. One word exactly. Watch me get these words. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So story. all American, there's a young actor that could play you. You think? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. The leader, the leader show, uh, Daniel. I, I really respect his. I respect yeah, him I as an actor. Yeah, I respect him as, and I like. I, I just, but when I'm. When I was saying too is that I love the energy that I see in 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 these young young actors who are who are getting it because it, it, the times are different. When we was coming up, we knew that we had to work. We knew that you know we had to just get in here and grind. You yeah. know. And, but now they say, okay, I'm just gonna stand on the street corner and you know do some Instagram videos or do some oh, TikTok. It's a, <laughs> it's a different game now. So when I see actors who really understand the grind and understand what it takes, and they they don't think that they're just going to be there just because they make a video or get, get discovered in the restaurant. I like seeing that type of Yeah, thing. that's that's we call that that old school. The old school. That's that's the, old school. Know, the old school. How you said that old school? That's the old school. The old school. All, right, uh, <laughs> all facts. Number two for Morris okay. Chestnut. Okay. You have had some of the most beautiful leading women in your films. I have. Okay, you yeah. always get a dime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've have. had a few, but you had a yeah, lot. Yeah, you, you had a few. I had a few. You had a lot. <laughs> um, if you were to do uh, a, another film and you can go back mm. and pick one of your favorite actors to work with again, wow. which one would you pick? Or is it, is it drama or comedy? Um, Let's say drama. Let's okay, say drama. Because might, that might give you two choices. You know, so I was, I was, I will say this. I will say this. So all of them are are incredible, and all of them can do the one that the one that can do both incredibly. I already well. know what you're about to say. Go ahead. No, I bet you. I bet you. I bet you, I bet you don't know. I bet you don't know. Regina. Regina. I was. I, said, say, I Regina, said Regina Hall. Regina, 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 Regina. She can do everything. She can do everything. She, she is. Do, a, she is bananas. She is. She's ridiculous. Regina, like ridiculous. Regina. Regina ridiculous. Hall. Are you yeah. looking at me? I'm looking at you. You are uh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So she could do. So if I, she could do inc that incredibly well. But honestly, most of them like. Gab of course, Gabrielle Union. She her one thing I loved about working with Gabrielle Union is that um, not only was she she was very talented, you know, in front of the camera, but off she was one of the most intelligent and the most witty people and, to this and, day, and funny and funny and funny that I've ever met in the industry that I've ever met. I have never met. I, ha I don't. I, there's very few people that I can say would be able to rival her in her conversation, her wit. Her humor, her intelligence, and just just overall who she is. So Gabrielle's really, really up there. But all of them, like you know, from Gabrielle to Sanaa to ha I mean, all of them are. I mean, I don't think. I mean, they're all man, incredible. You missed the they're chocolate, all incredible, bro. Come on, yeah. stop playing. With <laughs> no, me, they're man. all incredible. Stop man. playing. All right, so real quick, what kind of music you listen to? Because I mean, I'm just trying to give my listeners right. and, and my people that love the podcast like a right. vibe about you. Because cats right. only see. You know, sort of the Mr. Chocolate. They don't know you cool. <laughs> they don't know you hoop. You play great defense, by the way. Yeah, defense. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah, couldn't yeah. guard me today, though. I was oh, on fire. Where'd you, where, where'd, where'd you play? Today. Where'd you play? Today. Where'd you play? I thought about you. I said, okay. I know he playing somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> where'd you play? Where'd you play? <laughs> I played at LA Fitness today. Oh, which one? Uh, uh played uh on Sepulveda. Uh, you had to think about it for a second. Mm -hmm. No, I know because it's two of them. But I okay. played the one on Sepulveda, and I was thinking. I said, I know Mo up. I was. At <laughs> and you was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, played, I, I was giving them buck. Is a day. Well, I can't wait for you to try to guard me, boy. I, I, I can't put I, it on I, you. I think I can get you. I think I can get you, but I don't, I don't. No. You without but, fouling? Without fouling? Without fouling? No. Of course, no, Bill. No, not without fouling. You always foul me, bro. Bill. Oh, oh, my God. God. What, what, you, and you what, always say that ain't a foul. What, what time? What time? What, what time do you play at LA Fitness? Uh-huh. What you gonna show? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't know more show. Oh, I, oh, oh, I, I was just playing the buckets. Bro. I was just playing, bro. Damn. He's like, what time? <laughs> 
See, that's the real uh, Morris Chestnut. Y'all got y'all think the movie screen. This brother will wake uh, up at three in the morning and beat your ass. So, <laughs> Mo, Mo, you playing tomorrow? Uh, I, yeah, I'm playing tomorrow. Yeah. What yeah. days do you want to play so I can line my life up? Will you let me know? I mean, I, I Mondays play. and Wednesdays is good. I could probably Monday, Wednesday, Tuesdays. Uh, usually work in the morning or at least. Okay, yeah. So what time? What time play? I, I went today. I went to play ball today at nine. But okay, I okay. get there till about like ten. Okay, they said they usually get there around ten thirty. But I was, you know, I was working on some drills and stuff, getting some shots up. Oh, oh, and, oh, oh, it's like that. I was working on some drills. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some shots I like up, to warm like up. That. You feel me? Yeah, okay, For cats okay. like you that okay. still got it. Okay, I got. I got. Oh see, my I god! I, oh, bro, bro, you can't guard me, bro. I Are you, you serious? I promise you, what's, man. what's your game, Bill? What's, what's your game? I'm, you know, I'm just real tricky. That's the problem with it. That's why I say you can't guard me. I'm not saying you're not gonna be D, but you're not gonna be able to stop me from doing what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? That's Which the is difference. like what? Shoot three, two, two, I get to the rack. Mid-range. I get to my spots. You don't know where my spots at. You know what I'm saying? The dribbles is gonna have you left to right. I'm gonna have I'm 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 gonna have you shifting. <laughs> <laughs> really? That, that was it. Oh yeah. Okay. Because well, I'm gonna tell out. you. I'm gonna tell you how I know. Okay. How you know? Cause this dude today was guarding me, uh-huh. and he was like, "Yo, yo, man, dad, you ain't, I ain't know you had that in your bag." That's what people say. I ain't know you had that in your bag because I got it in the bag. But see, the thing with me is I play with the competition. Like, say, for instance, like today they was all young cats. They ain't really know the game. Uh-huh. And so they kind of like all shoot threes. You know what I'm talking right, about. Right, 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 oh, right, 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 Steph Curry, three. you messed up the game yeah, for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they especially especially yeah. going to 12. Because <laughs> everybody <laughs> think they Steph Curry. Nobody passes on the cut. Everybody just go off the screen and shoot threes. Right. That's very true. That's it, very true. Steph Curry made true. everybody that's do that. That's very true. We, we got a blend. <laughs> Me and you. We came up with the cut, <laughs> the screen. We got the mid-range and, and off the glass. When the last oh, yeah. time you seen a young dude shoot off the glass? Don't yeah, nobody I, the glass. They don't do that. They don't no, know they don't the, do the glass. glass. Okay, we okay. old school. I remember. I remember when we was doing the brothers because we was playing, and uh, I, you, you were you were working on your crossover back then. I do remember that. That's when I was getting it. Nice. Have you perfected? You it's perfected bananas. it. Bananas. Your crossover is. Oh yeah. I got. I got. I got a different one. Like that was when I was just doing the AI joint, but that was uh. a carry. Okay. Remember, because okay. I used to do the one where you bring it up like this. Right, 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 right. That, that'll get gone today. Okay. You uh. got to bring it closer and tighter. It's faster. Pop, pop. Okay, so it's like that now. Yeah, because that ankle gone. <laughs> Oh, I got to get to the no, no, you're working with. No, listen. Working with. Y'all don't understand. This is me and Mo in real life. You <laughs> yeah, know, definitely, definitely. Friends having fun. I'm going to take you back. I'm going to take you back to a really fun time real quick. You, okay. just, you just made me. We used to play in the best celebrity games ever. Yes. <laughs> For the cats that wasn't here in L.A. in the right. 90s, uh-huh, when uh-huh. I first met Mo, he used to wear, he used to wear bandanas yeah, and shit did, back did, in the yeah. day. That was, his, he, that was his little baby sexy. That, that was so it, he that had that his bandanas made. Dave, right. shout out to Dave. Dave Brown used yeah, to be with yeah. us all the time. Yeah, yeah. What was one of your favorite celebrity games you played in? Wow. So I think the first did we the first one I thought we played in was it at Biv's house? It was at Michael Bivens' house. It was at Michael Bivens' house. That was yeah. that was that, I, that was like that to me, was classic. That was classic because right there. Because yeah. people didn't realize Michael Bivens could play. Yep. Yep, yep. Michael Bibbins was real, real good. Uh, Will Smith's boy Omar was back there. Yep, Sher yep, Miller was yep, back there. Yeah, Heavy D there. was back there. Yep. Yo, I got the pitch. It's cra- bro. It's crazy. I, why was we at Michael Bibbins' house? That was, see, that was to me. That was like, yo, he's having something at his house. Why was we at Michael <laughs> Bibbins' house? I don't know, man. Michael Bibbins, call us. At his house. Why was we at your house, Michael Bibbins? Yeah. This was like 90, 91. Chris Spencer was back yeah, there. Chris yeah, Chris Spencer was there. Yeah, 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 McKnight. Yep, 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 yep. Who's so, your tough, toughest person you had to guard? In uh, subbing it. Oh, uh, uh, let me see. The toughest person that I had to guard in this. <laughs> man. I'm going to tell uh, you who I had to guard. Who, who, who's the toughest person? Toughest guy I ever had to guard. He is the GM for the Warriors oh, right now. Oh, my God. God. Yes. What's oh, his yeah, name? He was a beast. Oh. It was um, Bob Myers. Bob Myers. Bob Myers. Yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob Myers. was a beast in the league. Let me tell you something. He was a beast in the league. Bob Myers, I'm giving you your flowers. He was literally unguardable because his range, his range was, there was no no limit on his range and he had a quick release. So if you messed up on the switch or you just didn't get there, it was over. Right, It was right. a three. It was the, a bucket, bro. There were two people for me that were, that were, that were really hard. They're a little twitchy. They were very twitchy and it was just really hard. And they were giving everybody buckets. One was uh, Antoine. 
Tanner. Tanner. Antoine Tanner. He was tough. <laughs> he was tough. <laughs> Antoine. Antoine was getting Oh, he was, my God. Was, you right. Antoine he, was a problem. He was a problem. He was, he was a, a problem. problem. He was so tricky with the ball. He was, yeah. And fast. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, and then Corey. Corey. Uh, Corey. Um, Which Corey? Corey is married. That's married to um, Tia. Uh, Corey Hart. Hardick. Yeah, Corey Cordy, Cordy, yeah, he was tough. Yeah, and he, he, tough. Had a, he had a nice stroke. He had a nice stroke, yeah. Yep. So, see, so those see we, we ball players, people. You yeah. think we just actors. We do shit. <laughs> uh, Morris, I want to say to you, man, uh, mm -hmm. for the fans, I want you yeah. to tell them mm -hmm. where they can see the Best Man Final Chapters. So the Best Man Final Chapters will be on Peacock. So mm -hmm. if you don't have Peacock, subscribe to Peacock now. Mm -hmm. um, and when does it come out? It'll be out uh, December 22nd. December okay, so 22nd, for Christmas, back, everybody, for Christmas, yes. for Christmas, get locked and loaded, get your eggnog, there get your, get your little, little bit of tequila, whatever you want to drink, and there enjoy the show. I I really am honored to have you on here. Oh, thank you, um, man. As my friend and as a wonderful guest, bro, you gave Gave our, us an opportunity to get to know you better mm, and you. Uh, get a chance to see how you, how you got the more magic. You know, you're <laughs> no. blessed. And we, can we give a shout out to your mom for oh, yeah. just being the key? Just, oh, I love your mom. I haven't uh, seen you, her in so long. Man, Ooh, thank you. Miss Chester, and, we love you. And, and man, and thank you for having me, man. And congrats on everything that you're doing, man. Thank you know, you. I've always been a fan, still still a fan. So thank you for everything, Thank man. you, brother. Appreciate Ladies you, and thanks. gentlemen, Morris Chestnut in the building. What Mr. What Sexy, a.k.a. <laughs> Mr. Chocolate, only on top billing, baby. Baby. There it is. Peace. <laughs> ah, bro. How you doing? <laughs> That's Morris. I told you. Welcome to the show, baby. Appreciate you, man. Morris Chestnut, baby. In the house.